keep that in mind. Our website is lowercolumbia.edu slash conversations. And that gives you the links to our Zoom. Uh, it gives you the links to previous events that we've recorded and uploaded to the LCC YouTube channel and our schedule for the rest of the quarter. So please go there if you have any questions. But today I wanna to welcome Alex Brame and the Fighting Smelt. For over 50 years, Lower Columbia College has had a strong and successful speech and debate team. We take pride in our legacy and the generations of leaders who have come from our program. Currently, LCC Speech and Debate is a gold medal community college program in the Northwest Forensics Conference, representing Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Utah, and Alaska, and is the sixth ranked IPDA debate community college in the nation. Not bad. So please welcome Alex Brame and the Fighting Smelt. Thanks so much, Courtney, and thanks everybody for being here physically on Zoom. Uh, I am trying my best to uh, lean forward into the microphone here, but if at any point you can't hear me, flag me down, let me know to try to get in closer. We are using every single microphone that we have available for our debate today. Uh, so as Courtney mentioned, uh, we are the Fighting Smelt, uh, the competitive speech and debate team here at LCC, and we're really excited to be here at Community Conversations. I can get this to move forward. Before getting too deep into what we're going to do, I actually am going to ask for a little bit of your participation. We are having a public debate and part of public debate is tracking how opinions change or perhaps stay the same over the course of listening to that debate. So we're going to be debating the following resolution. Lower Columbia College should change its mascot or nickname. Uh, before we engage in any discourse about that, I would love to ask for you all to share what you think about that. And the way we're going to gather that information is by asking you to vote. Uh, so we have this system set up through a platform called Poll Everywhere. Uh, you can vote either by texting or by going on a website. So if you're going to be texting, you're actually gonna have to send two texts. The first text is text the, the bunch of letters and numbers, LCC smelt 294 to the number 37607. After you send that message, you should get a response from the platform saying, okay, you're in this system now. And then you'll follow that up with a second text where you either say A, B, or C corresponding to how you feel about this topic. So A is yes, I think LCC should change its mascot. B is no, I do not think LCC should change its mascot. And C is I'm unsure, and it is okay. Feel free to say that you're unsure if you don't have a lot of information about this, if you haven't really thought about the sides, there is no shame. And this is of course all private, blind. We're not going to know who individually said what. If you would rather vote directly online, I'm thinking of this specifically for the folks on Zoom watching this from somewhere else, uh, you can go to pollev.com slash LCC smelt 294. You'll have the opportunity to pick one of those three options as well. I do wanna leave this up here on the screen a little bit longer to make sure everyone can see the information, take the time to vote. Uh, if you do have any questions about this process, please let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to just start generally talking about what you're going to see today. Uh, I'm actually gonna to try to speak as little as possible. Um, I know that my name is the one that shows up in the promotional materials about this, uh, but really this is meant to be a showcase of our amazing team and our amazing students. I'll talk about each of them individually in just a little bit. How are we doing on the voting? Is this working for people? It says it's not active. It did work. So it works for everyone but Leah. <laughs> All right, we can circle back to that if we need to. Let's talk a little bit about the fighting smelt. Courtney gave us a great little introduction, but I just want to say uh, a bit more about the history and legacy of our team. This is LCC's competitive intercollegiate speech and debate team that has existed in one form or another since 1968. Uh, recently, our team has had some really strong success that we love to brag about. Uh, we have been very fortunate to be named a back-to-back -back Northwest Forensics Conference gold medal program. 
Uh, as Courtney mentioned, that is a conference representing a bunch of states throughout the Northwest. And it's such an honor to be named as one of the top programs there. And there are a lot of different metrics that are used to measure success on the national scale. That is because there are different formats, different organizations that oversee this activity of collegiate speech and debate. Uh, but really by any metric, the last couple of years, we've been one of the top five community college programs in the country. And on one hand, we're thrilled about that. We know the hard work that we've put in and, and that is a reflection in, in the success that we've had. It also comes against this backdrop of lots of cuts in higher education and across our region and across the country, we see schools deciding to not invest in their speech and debate education. And so while we're very happy to be one of these highly ranked programs, part of the reason for that is we're losing programs. And so we're very excited that we have this strong support from our community, uh, that our administration at LCC and that community members constantly show up and show their support for what we do so that we can keep doing this. And of course, along the way, keep winning some shiny awards. Um, our current team consists of six LCC students. Uh, we have five of them here with us today. And as of right now, we are competing fully online in these virtual tournaments where competitors compete with other students from other schools uh, on webcams. And uh, we are hoping that by the end of this year, in, in light of changes in the pandemic, we'll be able to return to some limited in-person competition. The other thing that is just, uh, yes. Okay, I'll, I will work on that once we get the debate started and maybe I'll jump in in between speakers and just confirm, let people know that we actually do have the ability to vote once that's happening. Um, so the last thing I'm going to say about the current team is our conference championship tournament starts tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking when I signed us up to uh, do this presentation today with that happening tomorrow, but um, our, our team is working really hard right now and, and their brains are probably all over the place with this stuff and their classes, um, but they've still put together something that I think is going to be really great. Uh, let's talk about our format of debate. We're all, all out, of, out of whack here. Um, IPDA debate is the format of debate that we primarily compete in, and it asks competitors to prioritize effective communication. We are imagining that our audience is the public. And that's why I really love participating in community conversations, because this is exactly what IPDA is asking us to imagine. We have an audience of people who don't have any particular training in debate competition, the jargon that comes with debate, and so hopefully we will be able to communicate with you in the same way that we communicate in our competition rounds where we are prioritizing that effective straightforward communication. Normally it is a one versus one format of debate and every, every round competitors will engage with a different topic which they only start preparing 30 minutes before the, the debate starts. Today, we're not quite doing that. Today, we're doing this experimental two versus two format of debate because we wanna show off more of our competitors. And we also did not just start preparing for this 30 minutes ago. We wanted to make sure that we could show you something that was really well thought out. So we did actually do a practice version of this debate yesterday evening. Um, but also just know this is not a, a term paper or a major project that we've been working on for many months. This is meant to be something that the team researches and puts together in a relatively short amount of time. Um, so I guess keep that in mind. So let me just briefly introduce our debaters and then I will turn it over to them. Uh, we're going to have two excellent debaters representing the affirmative team, Penelope Anderson and Ada Moore, and two excellent debaters representing the negative team, Tyler Tremaine and Sarah Tran. And what I really love about this selection, it does make up most of the core of our team. So it wasn't like I handpicked these people for this reason, but I think this team really showcases the breadth of types of students that we serve at Lower Columbia College. We have in Sarah, a Running Start student, a member of the Running Start program who is doing dual completion of high school and college. Uh, he's very much a leader on our campus involved in tutoring and student government and all sorts of things uh, while also being a high school student. Uh, we have an Ada Moore, a, your more traditional college student, LOL at the idea of Ada being traditional, but uh, she did graduate from high school and now is in her first year at LCC. Um, in Penelope Anderson, we have a part-time student who is preparing to transfer in the future. And then in Tyler Tremaine, we have uh, a member of one of our Bachelor of Applied Sciences programs uh, who is going to be pursuing a career in education moving forward. So a really interesting group of people uh, who I think are going to put on a really great show. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go off and see if I can figure out my poll problem, and I will turn the floor over to our affirmative team.
Hello and welcome to everyone, both virtual and in person. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, the resolution or the question that we're going to be debating today is Lower Columbia College should change its nickname or mascot. To kind of give us a better idea of what we're specifically talking about today, we're gonna to go over some vocabulary. So should, the word should is usually defined as used to indicate obligation, duty, or correctness. Change is to make someone or something different, alter or to modify it. Uh, a nickname or mascot specifically is a person or thing that is used to symbolize the spirit of a particular event or organization. So for those of you that don't know, LCC's current mascot is the red devil. It's a kind of like a little baby devil with a trident and you kind of see it all over memorabilia and merch across the campus. So usually in debate, we give it a type of debate or a system in which we can weigh who wins and who loses. So this type of debate is a policy round weighed on net benefits. So whichever side can show you is it more net beneficial to either one, change the mascot or to not, that is who is decided to win the round. So as far as burdens go, the affirmative team, my and my teammate have the burden to show that it is more beneficial to change Lower Columbia's mascot than to not. And it is a gate negations to do the opposite. With that, that brings me to our main body of our case or rounds of argumentation that we have. Our first contention is that of harms or the harms of the current mascot that we have as of right now. Um, the first sub point under this is offensiveness. So we actually have a large population of people that fall under the Christian faith within Cowlitz County. And as many people know, a devil is traditionally not very representation, representative of people of the Christian faith. So it calls into question, how many people are we actually representing with a mascot that's made to represent a community? Uh, to give you some numbers, 30.4% of Cowlitz County it falls under the Christian faith, whatever subsection you are of that, a lot of people are Christian in Cowlitz County. And this is taken from the census. So specifically within the census, we a lot of people don't actually report their Christian, their religion specifically. So this doesn't even account for a large number of people who chose not to report specifically. Uh, under this contention, sub point B is representation. So my team values that the Red Devil is not very representative of Cowlitz County. Um, there's nothing really tying this idea to Cowlitz County, whether it be a Red Devil or something else. Uh, so we think that changing the mascot to something else is really beneficial because then we can better represent a community representation or a school like LCC. Uh, with that, that brings us to our second contention of that of the plan. So what is the plan here? What are we trying to do? Uh, so the main person or the thing that's gonna be doing it is Lower Columbia College. We call that the actor. Uh, the second part is the mandate or what we're actually doing. So we're gonna change the Red Devil to the Fighting Smelt, but just so happens to be Lower Columbia Speech and Debate team's mascot. We have Little Smelt with boxing gloves. It's quite cute actually. Um, and then, so when we're talking about funding and all these other things that have to do with this, of course, it's going to be a process. Changing a mascot over takes time. When we're talking about the long-term and short-term benefits of doing this, it's very clear. Uh, to kind of clear that up, we're gonna move to our third contention of that of solvency. So how does this solve the harms I've just brought up with representing the community of uh, Christians within our community and also not representing the community of Cowlitz County? So first sub point under this is thoughtful community representation. Um, and how this solves the problem of the offensiveness that could bring up from having the red devil. So according to the US Fish and Wildlife Service of last year, 705,000 fishing licenses were sold in Washington state. This is actually a lot more than other states. And so we can see we have a large population of people who like to fish. Um, people that are longstanding people from Cowlitz County also know we have something called the smelt run every year. And to give you some idea of the annual smelt run and how this solves the harm of representation, it better represents Cowlitz County because we have been having the smelt run since uh, 1840. To give you some context, Longview was founded in 1924, according to Kelso.gov. So the smelt run actually predates the founding and making of Longview as a city. So that's really cool. Um, according to the Daily News from March 2nd of 2021 also, it, Smelts have a huge historical value to Cowlitz County as a community. The native people that used to live on the Cowlitz River actually utilize the smelt as a main source of food and for trapping. And so it actually not only represents the current community that's living here now, but also the past um, native communities that used to be here. So it's a more holistic choice when we're talking about representing the community, which was the entire point of a mascot essentially. Uh, with this, it now brings me to our last contention of unique advantages, which is actually kind of fun. So um, the fighting smell as a mascot is novel and interesting. When you think about a mascot, you want to have a mascot that represents something cool that sets you apart from other teams or institutions. Um, when I think of a red devil personally, it doesn't seem that all interesting to me. It's just we have a lot of mascots that have to do with something like that. And so a novel thing like a red 
uh, a fighting smell is much more interesting overall. Um, to kind of give you a ballpark of what this actually means, there's actually a team called the Birmingham Biscuits in Alabama. Now, what's really fun about the biscuits is that a lot of people buy their merch and know about them because their mascot is so novel. Um, to give you an idea of this, according to Ballpark Digest of last year, um, and they, in 2010, they served $33 million in merchandise alone. With inflation, to help you calculate that, that's $42 million in 2021 US dollars now. So that's a huge amount of money just in merchandise with having a really interesting mascot. So for all of these reasons, I think it makes the most sense to change our mascot from a red devil over to a fighting smelt. Not because it solves the harms that we've been able to brought up, but because it also has unique advantages to better represent our community and to help sell, sell, sell merch over time. Uh, for all these reasons, I urge all of you to vote for the affirmation team and I now stand open for cross-examination or questioning from the opposite team. I'm just going to jump back in to quickly say, I think that we've solved our problem with the uh, poll. So I'm going to put this back up and we'll just leave this here for the duration of the debate. Uh, everyone who was trying to vote earlier and wasn't able to, you should now be able to vote uh, to the best of your ability. Try to vote based on what you thought before the debate. Perhaps you've had something swayed as you just listened to Penelope's excellent opening speech. Um, but try to vote for how you thought coming into this. We'll have an opportunity to express how we feel about this after the debate is over as well. And I will step away and not talk for a while. Tyler, come on up. I'll come on up. Thank you. Important. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm good to open some cross. So I'm gonna ask some questions and then my partner will come up and give a lot more of our case and some of our arguments and points. Um, so I heard you mentioned changing the mascot. Do you know how much it would cost to change the mascot? We don't have an exact number right now, but we know it would be a good amount of money. Okay, thank you. Um, and when you talk about the Christian faith might being offended, have we received any complaints over these? Um, we don't really report. I don't know if LCC reports on complaints specifically about the mascot, but I do know personally from personal experience that having something representing like a red devil for an institution like a school could be harmful to people of the Christian faith. Ah, so um, as of today, you don't know of any complaints of the mascot? Not to my knowledge, no. Thank you. Um, and when you talk about um, the majority, so you're talking about what was the percent of Christians in Cowles County? 30.4%. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so would you say that that's a large majority of the percentage of Pellis County? Um, what we try to make a point is that the census doesn't always accurately represent everyone. So there's a huge section of people that choose not to pick their religion, but we know based off of Cowlitz County as a community that there's a lot of people of the Christian faith. Perfect. So in your next point, you talked about representation. Mm -hmm. Do you think representation is picking what the majority of people believe? I think representation is about representing as much as many people as possible in the most inclusive way possible. Thank you. Um, you also talked about um, unique advantages. Um, do you think a devil is unique? Um, not really. We tried to make a point of how there's other schools or teams that have a devil-based mascot, and um, I can't even remember most of them. So that Do you makes think a point. little baby devil is unique? <laughs> um, that's really individual. Um, I personally don't like baby devils because it brings up some interesting memories, but we're good. <laughs> it sounds more open-ended. Um, so you mentioned that the fighting smelt is cute, and do you think that a little baby devil is also a little bit more cute? I think a fish with boxing gloves is adorable on a personal note. I don't know about a devil. So a little baby devil with boxing gloves. <laughs> Possibly. Hmm. Thank you. So maybe more like outfits of logos and not actual logos. I'm confused at that question. You think that? <laughs> um, thank you so much. And you talked about um, representing of the area. Um, Thank you so much. So that concludes my cross-examination and then I'll welcome my teammate to give more points of our side. Thank you.
working? Hello? Okay. Yeah, please let me wait. Okay. Wait, can you guys? Okay, there we go. Sorry, there's something that makes me anxious about speaking to a mic. It'll be just a moment before I can get my timer started up. Okay. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. I do wanna to say thank you so much to Penny for her amazing speech. Today, I will be negating and opposing today's resolution. LCC should change its mascot, and I'll be opposing this resolution today for three reasons. First, being competitive intent. Second, brand establishment. And third, overwhelming cost. First, let's focus on the competitive intent. According to Cyclopedia Judicia, the devil is not a proper noun referring to an antagonist of God, but rather as a common noun meaning adversary and as opposition. As we've seen my opponent's first point, she refers to mascot in the context of an antichrist, but in this context of a school, we can view it as, again, as a competitive adversary, which is exactly how we want to represent our sports teams. And as we've taken from example, whether that be from um, Duke's Blue Devils or our very own Little Red Devil ourselves, my opponent admits that we have hadn't had complaints about it. So I think this is a way to in this particular context to represent our sports teams as competitive and adversary. This brings me to my second point, which is brand establishment. As our logo has been placed all over campus and as well as the community, and that can be ranging from things like jackets, socks, the decals on our gym floors and whatnot. We've seen that the mascots integrated all throughout our community. And according to the American Marketing Association, using a mascot and applying it everywhere on our memorabilia is simply a main branding strategy for schools. And because LCC has used this mascot dating back to its very creation, we have generations of alumni as well as current students that have deep connections to our mascot, and they also simply take pride. So therefore, it is truly representative of our community. In other words, having a mascot is a symbol that people recognize. And when people recognize it, that is a sign of community. So changing the mascot will not only be confusing, long transition, but it will also break this community bond. With that being said, LCC will be given the difficult task of not only bringing in a new logo, but also bringing students and alumni under simply this new image and building that bond that, again, takes years. This brings me to my third contention today, and that is overwhelming costs. Although I do not have an estimate of the cost and my opponent was unable to estimate how much it would cost, we can also look at other campuses who have undergone similar rebranding strategies. Let's take, for example, Robert A. Lee High School, which spent nearly $1.5 million to rebrand its campus. Although rebranding was simply the right move, we can use this example to get an estimate of what it will cost. And as we've seen, this cost is overwhelming, ranging within that $1.5 million. And with that being said, this is simply the wrong time to do so, especially in the context of the pandemic. According to the Washington Post, during the pandemic, enrollment has fallen sharply, especially for community colleges. And at LCC, we've seen these drops. In 2021, TDN reports that last year, the college dropped 15.2 in full-time enrollment and another 3.4 last spring. And as we've seen, as enrollment drops, so does funding that comes from tuition. And on top of this, including deductions in state fundings, this has had detrimental harms to our, commute, to our campus. For example, TDM further reports that LCC has lost 2 million in state funds, leading to cutting 13 full-time staff and 45 part-time employees. Especially during these difficult times that COVID presents and low enrollment, LCC has already had to make difficult decisions that to integral aspects of our campus. With that being said, the funding that we can use to rebrand our mascot can be used and allocated in more um, arguably important aspects of our campus. One being our online resourcing for our staffing, especially during COVID and making sure that they have proper benefits and 
whatnot for teaching during COVID and other crucial resources on our campus that the money can be used for. With that being said, we can look to competitive intent, brand establishment, and overwhelming costs to place a negative or no ballot today. Thank you. All right, does my opponent stand open for cross-examination? Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ada Moore, hello. All right. Okay, so when you talk about how mascots are representative of a school, what is a mascot to the memories of the place, the people you know there? How does the Red Devil represent Lower Columbia College itself? As Lower Columbia College has had enrolled thousands and millions of students, that's essentially the memories. Is that millions, millions, millions not students. millions, sorry, that's a lot, but ranging in the thousands area that if when they recognize essentially our mascot, that is the community I'm referring to and the representation I am referring to. Okay, but what is unique about a red devil and how does that represent Cowlitz County any different? Well, I don't think that a mascot necessarily has to be like grant groundbreakingly unique. And it represents our community in the sense of, again, we've had loads of alumni and also we have loads of fans, especially for our sports teams, as well as students that identify with our mascot. Okay. And do you believe that a mascot not only represents sports, but also the students and the academics of the institution? Yes. That's why I'm referring to alumni as well as current students all within right, that. All right. Thank you. And that is my time for cross-examination. Thank you. Oops, sorry. For, so right now I will be refuting the, neg the negative case and I'm representing the affirmative team. So saying that LCC should change its mascot. Okay. Now, when my opponent talks about, well, opponents talk about representing alumni, we really should not ignore the fact that alumni aren't represented so solely by a mascot. When you think of a former in, of, of a place that you went to school there, you don't think immediately of the lower Columbia College Red Devils. Really, the Red Devils are only associated with the sports teams here and not really our academics. As you can see on the podium that is in front of me right now, it says lower Columbia College with an image of a mountain. Like There's even one on my jacket right now. So we actually don't even use the Red Devil logo in much other than our merchandise and within our sports programs. So if we're thinking about representing our community better, we should really think about a mascot that is fitting. And a red devil is unique, not, not even unique. It's just basic. You could probably find tons of other community colleges, high schools, middle schools around the country that have the red devil as their mascot. And as my and as my partner brought up earlier, not ma mascots that are novel or that are unique bring in more revenue. She mentioned with the Birmingham Biscuits, the, the minor league baseball team, that they brought in $33 million of revenue, which involving inflation would bring it to 2021, would bring it up to $42 million, which would be groundbreaking for our campus during this pandemic. Now, when my opponents mention overwhelming costs, I do agree. It would cost our college a lot of money to change a mascot that has been here for decades, but we also need to keep the benefits in mind of being more representative of our community and its people. The fighting, sm not the fighting smelt specifically, but smelt the fish have been a staple in Native American, in Native American life for centuries before 
um, Amer before Americans came and colonized Washington State and Oregon, we need to think about what the fish represented to them. To them, it represented food, it represented wealth, it represented being at peace. So if we change our mascot to the fighting smell or just simply the smell, we are changing it to be more inclusive of everybody and be really just fun in general. So with that, I urge all of you to cast, to cast a yes vote in our poll, which is well, not above me anymore, but you know. <laughs> and with that, that is my time. So thank you all. Thank you. Um, that's a timer because time's always important. So we all talk the same amount. Um, um, thank you so much. So this is uh, the negation's last time speaking. So thank you everyone that is here and on Zoom as well. Thank you for all participating and judges and you're all judges as well. So no, don't forget to vote and send in those things. Um, so as we go through this case one more time, I, I will be talking about some of our points as negation and also um, countering some of the affirmations for changing this mascot. So um, to remind everyone, we are talking about Lower Columbia College should change its mascot and nickname. As negation, we are saying we should not change it and keep it the same. So as we go through, we're talking about competitive intent, that the little, this little baby devil is competitive. We're not talking about the monster image of Christian faith and antichrist figures. We're talking about a little baby devil that is driving competition and competitiveness as teams fight, as we have something to stand with, this little baby devil. Um, brand establishment, um, as we go through, um, the brand establishment can really draw unity between alumni and new students. That, Older students that came through the program can say, oh yes, I remember my days as a little baby devil. I remember those times as well. So bringing brand establishment and unity between alumni and current students would be great. And we want to continue that moving forward. Um, my opponent's talking about it be, might be offensive to other um, communities. And we have not seen any of those complaints move forward. We're talking about a hypothetical um, complaint that has not actually taken place um, and representation that we're talking about representing and bringing unity within people of um, an older generation, a newer generation and bringing unity within that. And finally, we want to be talking about cost, that there is a cost. Um, changing a mascot in other schools has cost $1.5 million. So this is a real cost that is of right up front. So changing a mascot has an upfront cost. My opponents talk about another minor league baseball team, which is not a college. And minor league baseball teams do drive revenue from merchandise far more than a community college. So their marketing and teams and branding is clearly going to be higher and more inflated than a community college that's more pushing for education versus ticket sales and merchandise. So these numbers I would say are far um, apples and oranges when we compare this money value. And the money that would do the change is 1.5 million. And as we're talking about um, the, this is not the right time to change. That we are now seeing a lower number of students in the community. And this means that putting this large upfront cost and burdening the college for paying 1.5 million to make new gyms, more merchandise, um, all this would be a burden to the school that is already being crunched for time and money. So by doing this, um, the school might be forced to lay off teachers, lay off programs to find the funds for this. So by making this new logo, it would actually be hurting the college in an already troubling time. Um, um, uh, my opponent also brought up that LCC also has other images and logos that talking about the um, mountains and lakes that she was saying that the little baby devil isn't used very much. 
And in contrast, if it's not used very much, I don't see a point in spending millions of dollars to change it. If we're not using it, why should we change it now? So as we look at these points and go through them of what our opponent has talked about being offensive, and it is clearly not with the number of complaints that are entered, um, talking of representation, that we're not talking about its representation, but more talking about competitive intent of what this little baby devil represents. Um, and my opponent also talking about how the a fighting smelt for their claim would also be cute. And I would argue that a little baby devil is also cute. Um, so running back through, um, as we go through for the competitive intent that we are bringing a competitiveness to our school that we can rally behind and stand behind this mascot that cheers on the sidelines of games of this little baby devil in sporting events. Um, brand establishment, bringing unity between alumni and current students that we can reminisce of the times we were all little baby devils going to the school in this wonderful community. And the cost, the upfront cost versus a potential, and my opponent brought up like an inflated number of being unique by bringing up a major, a minor, um, baseball team. Um, so this upfront cost of 1.5 million is going to be upfront. And in a troubling time of the community, it is simply the wrong time to change and would show no benefit when we also have other logos um, that work perfectly fine. So with this, I urge you guys to be voting and texting in your programs, voting, no, we should not change our logo at this time. And with this, I open and have a last closing thing with my opponent. All right, since it is my last time finishing up the affirmation, I would like to again extend a round of thank yous to everyone for being here both virtually and in person. We really appreciate you taking the time to come watch our debate today. So with that, my last job here today is to give you some voters or reasons why you should feel comfortable voting for affirmation instead of negation today. So my first voter or reason has to do with the net benefits of both affirmation and negation. So when we talk about net benefits, as I brought up previously, this is how we weigh rounds in IPDA. So whichever team is better able to show which side is more net beneficial wins. And judges or audience, we've been able to show you through affirmation that F is correct here. When we look net beneficially, when we're talking about representing communities as a whole, the Red Devils just doesn't do it. We can throw our own numbers and concepts all day. The 1.5 million number that keeps running up is from a high school that has significantly less students and a smaller campus size. When we talk about funding, they're not equatable and they're really hard to kind of compare these numbers. Um, in contrast, what we're talking about here overall, it's gonna take a long time. This is a process. And when we're talking about benefits, it's more beneficial to represent in a community, especially in a time where it's kind of being normalized to change mascots to better represent the situation. Things are changing and we need to represent and be responsible human beings in a community to better represent people that don't have a voice in things like this. Uh, my second voter has to do with the long-term benefits. So we've been talking a lot about how the alumni will feel about it, how the current students feel about it. But as a as a student of something, I want my mascot to represent something I'm proud of, something that's fun and interesting and different. Um, having it be a devil is fine, but a fighting smell is cute. It has boxing gloves. It's a fun image. It's easy to draw for little kids that have a dream of going to a college. It's simplistic. And when we're talking about Lower Columbia College, the image already, it's Lower Columbia. It's representing the river of the Columbia. So it already makes sense kind of with the theming of the entire school as a whole. Um, my next voter and my last voter is a new era representation. I kind of mentioned this before, but if you've been paying attention to the news, there's been a lot of things about people changing their mascots or their team names to not um, be as impactful as they once were. For example, the Washington Redskins changed their name to the Washington football team because there were images being wrong with the Redskins with Native American populations. It's been questioned with the Tomahawk Chop and other things. When we're talking about these are huge 
groups, huge sports teams that are changing their representation because they see a problem with it. That should say something to everyone in this room and everyone watching virtually. This is a precedent in a new era that we're setting. And as an institution like a school, it's our responsibility to be respectful to the people around us that don't have voices. Um, there's also another example here of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. They changed their name over to the Tampa Bay Rays. They just simplified it. It's the same thing, but it's along with this idea of taking the devil out of the name. Uh, other team is quite literally the devil's advocate here, but I want to steer towards being the responsible group that we know that we can do this. It takes time, but the long-term and short-term benefits, frankly, outweigh the negatives today. So for all these reasons, I hope you can feel comfortable voting for affirmation, and thank you for listening to us. All right, folks, I'm back. Let's uh, give a round of applause to our amazing students for that excellent debate. We'll wrap things up with a little discussion here. So what I want to do, as we've been alluding to this entire time, is ask everyone to once more go through that tedious process of voting. Uh, we would love to see, to be able to compare how you all felt before the debate to how you all feel after the debate. So again, just to walk through this, in case anyone missed it the first time, we're asking you to either vote by text or uh, on a website. So I'll go with the simpler one first, maybe for people who are at home. If you're voting online, it's pollev.com slash LCC smelt 294. You'll be able to pick your answer. Uh, if you're voting by text, you'll first have to text LCC smelt 294 to the number 37607 and then follow that up with your answer A, B, or C. A meaning yes, LCC should change its mascot. Uh, B being no, LCC should not change its mascot, and C being I'm unsure. I'm going to leave that up on the screen uh, so that everyone can, can see those instructions and the numbers and the letters. Um, and I know that we typically like to end these community conversations presentations with some Q&A. I would actually love to maybe change up the order here, do a little bit of uh, opportunity for our debaters, uh, perhaps for myself, to answer some of your questions. And then we will actually end with revealing the pre and post results so that we can see if one side or the other swayed more people. Um, so is that fine with you, Courtney? Can we go right into it? I uh, Looks like one of us has left behind a mic if you would like that. So I will ask the first question because I'm the boss and I get to do so. Um, what made you decide to go into speech and debate? There we go. Now it's on. All right. Um, well, what made me decide to go to, into speech and debate is because for everybody who knows me, I'm kind of a loudmouth, so I thought I'd apply that skill. Uh, for me personally, I had a hard time speaking in front of people, and I really like to talk to people, but I wanted to learn how to be comfortable in researching and presenting an idea, um, to learn how to research and do proper research, and then to apply my analysis and my own brain to concepts to better expand. And I'd, I've really gained a lot of skills, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity I was given through speech and debate. Um, I want to be a teacher, and I was telling my co-worker that I was doing debate and my co-worker made a joke that it was good marriage prep. Um, I disagree with that. Um, I want to do debate because I want to give clear, concise ideas quickly. Um, we are under so many time restraints in debate. And so as a teacher, I want to practice public speaking and also practice giving clear ideas concisely and organized. Uh, what drew me to speech and debate was as I um, started going to LCC, I like, sorry, sorry, I'm like, mirror, I'm saying this, but, um, sorry, I don't know why I can't say it. Okay, wait, sorry, this is like, like in my point, but over time, as I started reading more and whatnot and becoming like, quote unquote, smarter, I wanted to be able to better articulate my ideas and speech and debate provided like an perfect opportunity in order to practice things like critical thinking, um, thinking on your feet and be able to better articulate your ideas for a wide range of audiences. And speech and debate was a perfect opportunity to do so in kind of like a competitive setting. All right, thank you so much. Um, does, it, does anybody in our live audience have any questions? Okay, I'm gonna check the Zooms to see if we have any questions from our Zoom audience. No, Alex, would you like to take over? Yeah, and actually, you know, there's one thing that I always like to highlight when uh, we're doing these exhibition debates, and that is um, that 
in competition in, in the typical format that, that these uh, amazing students do this activity, uh, oftentimes we're put in, in uncomfortable situations where we are forced to engage with topics that are not always comfortable. And oftentimes we find ourselves needing to actually argue for a side that is not our own personal opinion about something. Um, and uh, actually, maybe I'll turn it over to you all uh, just to hear your feedback on this. Think about it for a second while I'm, I'm babbling. Um, but did anyone actually advocate for something today that they don't actually personally agree with? Um, as you're thinking about that, I'll just say, I think this is a really important skill. It's a great educational tool for people to think critically about both sides of any given issue. I think that's a really important thing for us all to be learning. And uh, in the case of today's topic, I kind of just assigned these teams. I said, okay, you two are going to be affirmative. You two are going to be negative. And they had to find a way to make that work. Um, so what you're not hearing today are like the passionate feelings of people who feel very strongly about changing the school's mascot or not changing the school's mascot. But instead you're hearing them do the best they can to advocate for the thing that I made them advocate for. Um, so I guess, does anyone want to share their own perspective on that with... Yeah, we'll just go in the same order we did as last time. Oh, well, I actually feel pretty neutral about this topic. I didn't care either way. I just found it fun. And with speech and debate, it's always fun to like trick my brain into being passionate about something I don't care much for. Like, I don't really care if the school mascot is a cute little baby devil, as Tyler put it, or if it's a fighting smelt with boxing gloves. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as Ada a little bit. I'm pretty neutral about the idea. Um, I'm a little biased because our speech and debate team has the mascot of the fighting smelts with little boxing gloves. And it has a little long history and we have a cute logo and everything. But honestly, in the turbulent times that we find ourselves in COVID, it's really hard to put something and change something like a mascot with a school or institution that's supporting a large group of student body in a time where a lot of people are struggling. So right now, I think it'd probably be best to keep it, but maybe in the future as things change and people kind of settle out a little bit, looking at something that's more simplistic, like a mascot to change would be an interesting thing in the future, especially for a new generation of students. Um, for this debate, I wasn't totally swayed or like strong opinions. Um, in past debates, there's been some more um, non-controversial ones of, I remember one that was, should Aaron Rodgers be um, put on probation for not getting vaccine or misleading the public? And I remember I was arguing that he should not be punished for these things. And personally, maybe he should, but it was this interesting thing of, I found research. I didn't have too much of an opinion on it, but in researching it, I kind of found an opinion and was able to and had to argue something different than what I believe. So these are different topics in debate that come up. So um, for my other job as a part of like the student government for LCC, they actually brought up this question essentially being like, should LCC change its mascot? And for that, I was like, yes, I'm all in for that because I think it's important that we create a very inclusive environment for our students here at LCC. But then it was kind of interesting to do a whole new perspective and do the opposite, essentially, of what I voted. And this kind of reminded me again to kind of not take things super surface level and to really look into, you know, whether that be numbers or different implications and whatnot. So, yeah, really interesting. All right, let me uh, just quickly share a discussion or uh, results here. And then if we do have time for more questions, we can take a couple more. Uh, it's been on the screen here for people who are in our physical audience for a while, people on Zoom or maybe just seen it more recently, but I'm actually really excited about these results. Uh, we had pre-debate uh, numbers of 36% of people saying, yes, we should change the mascot, 9% saying no, but a majority of people not being sure. And I think that's fairly normal. A lot of times we don't have fully formed opinions about something until we really engage with the issue. And uh, let me just say, as, as the coach of this team, I'm so thrilled by the post-debate results because both the affirmative side and the negative side increased their total. And we've significantly decreased the number of people who don't have an opinion about this. So we went from 55% uh, of people not being sure down to 7% of people not being sure, a decrease in 48%. Um, are, you know, if we want to go by who is the winner in terms of who got the, the most votes, 
uh, and the largest increase in percentage, it is the no side. So congratulations to negation. Um, but I'm also really excited to see that despite them increasing their score by more and ending up with more votes, the affirmative side still won over people with their argument. So overall, we saw both sides winning over people who they didn't have in their camp before. And that's really exciting to see as an outcome of debate. We do have a question coming in from, um, from the Zoom audience. Uh, when do you have time to meet and practice debates with such a busy schedule? I love that question because it relates to my last slide. Um, and I can at least just talk about when we do our, our practices and then maybe if some students want to jump in. Uh, if you are interested as a, a student who is uh, attending LCC, if you do want to learn more about our team, you can get in touch with me. I'll leave my email address there on the screen. We also have a website on the uh, clubs and organizations webpage. Uh, lowercolumbia.edu. Uh, and we have virtual meetings every Monday and Wednesday evening uh, on Zoom right now. And that's going to be at four o'clock and six o'clock. Ada, it looked like you said you wanted to say something about this. I mean, like my life is pretty crazy, but it's like two hours twice a week and the tournament every month. So it's just a lot of fun. Like I like putting aside my schedule for debate. I actually really want to hear from Sarah about this one uh, as perhaps the busiest person on our team. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Sarah's the busiest. How do you make time for this activity? I would say I'm the most dramatic, not the most busy, <laughs> far be frank. But um, I think a large part of it is that the team is just really fun to be on. It doesn't feel like a huge chore. Like, yes, I haven't been the greatest at practicing, if I'm being honest. But because again, the team is so inviting and they're really pushing you to be better, it doesn't really feel like a tedious chore, but more of like a team hangout that I kind of do essentially. And I kind of found that I continue going to speech and debate as my schedule kind of fills up because it is so rewarding. I really do think that learning how to speak clearly and being and developing confidence is something that will show up in every sector of your life. So that's kind of how I manage it, I guess. And also time management, prioritize six things, allocate the time needed. There we go. Anything else, Courtney? No, I, I, did you have more that the, uh, the other students wanted to mention on the time management issue? Okay. Um, I've got a question that's been uh, brought up a lot recently, especially with the uh, presidential debates. Are debates dead? Has it become like pundit television in a public setting? And then how can we change it back to actual debate? Like uh, between Baldwin and B uh, Buckley. That was a famous one, but that kept with the rules. I yeah, I, I love this question. I'll give a little bit of context and I'm excited to turn this over to our team. Um, I often do tell students as I'm trying to recruit them or as I'm talking to them about our team, if what you have in your mind is debates are like the presidential debates, you will be pleasantly surprised when you do real debate. Um, so I agree with your premise that uh, what we're seeing on television when things are being called debates often is not actual meaningful debate where the sides are making arguments and they're clashing with each other and they're engaging in a debate in good spirit with good intent. Um, so yeah, I wanna hear what you all think about this. Yeah, so as an avid follower of presidential debates, like my favorite thing to do every four years, get out those bingo cards. Um, huh. I love to notice that televised presidential and political debates more specifically are meant to throw out one liners and, you know, make polls look good. But with our form of debate, it's meant to be more educational than uh, funny or entertaining. Because back in the 60s um, and 70s, before live audiences were present at presidential debates, it was mainly focused towards the TV audience. So you weren't going to get a laugh or cheers. You were just going to get silence from the camera crew. And that's kind of how it's been feeling throughout this pandemic as we've been competing over a Zoom format is really we're here to convince the judge, not just a huge audience that will roar and cheer with whatever catchphrase we throw out. Really good stuff, Ada. Um, when I first joined, I was scared to death it was going to be a presidential debate. I don't like being yelled at by other people. And what's really nice about IPDA, which is the format of debate we do, um, this circle has lots of different formats of debate, NPDA, um, parliamentary debate. Um, the entire point of it is to be educational, to have both sides learn something. And the intent there is for people to grow from it, to not feel um, like they've been attacked. The entire point is to come to 
look at the resolution honestly and to weigh both sides of the argument. And there's rules and expectations there that as a student and as a judge, um, we can claim abuse. That definition is abusive. It inherently gives more weight to the affirmative than the negative. There are things in place that help it be educational. And there's also time limits. You can't go over a certain amount of time. Um, and that's really nice too, because you can have someone infinitely talking and interrupting you and you're not allowed to interrupt. You're not allowed to be overly rude. There's a level and expectation of education there. And it's a really nice way to kind of set a precedent in the circle of debate, which makes me feel really comfortable. We also have something called striking. So every time before debate, you get five individual topics and each person is allowed to cross off two topics they don't want to debate. So you always end up with one debate that most either side or either person in this case feels the most comfortable debating. And that kind of gives you the freedom. Like we had someone that was debating, uh, we should or should not get rid of the pink tax or Travis Scott should be held accountable for what happened at Astro World. Uh, we were able to decide what we felt comfortable with. And sometimes you strike into something you have no idea what it is, but the ability and the availability to to have that decision really um, frees up the ability for the debate to go smoothly and comfortably for both sides. I'll add perhaps one more thought on that issue. I, I hope that what we are doing is moving in a direction toward a, a, a better public representation of debate. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to be attending the tournament tomorrow and there will be students from 24 colleges and universities around the country logging in to give up their weekend to have meaningful conversations with each other. And that gives me so much hope. And I hope that we can continue to educate small armies of young people to be better at public discourse and, and bring that forward into their lives and hopefully model that in the influential jobs that they end up doing and, and going off to do. We have no idea. Um, so <laughs> as Penelope was just mentioning, every round uh, we have uh, actually five different possible topics. The competitors actually collaborate with their opponents to decide which ones they don't want to debate. They ultimately end up landing on the one that they will be debating. Uh, so we will have each competitor this weekend is guaranteed five rounds of debate and all five of them will be a different topic. And if they do well enough in those, they get to go on to another day of competition and continue, continue debating completely different things. Okay, Ada, do you wanna add? Turns out when you invite a bunch of debaters to community so, yeah. conversations, we talk a lot. So yeah, like for, um, you know, uh, for ethical purposes, we aren't allowed to know any of the topics, but coaches are allowed to submit them and like, I love to guess what's going to come up. So I feel like um, the, I feel like Reddit will be coming up this weekend with the anti-work subreddit that kind of blew up into flames yesterday. Um, it was on Fox news, but whatever. Um, I believe that, uh, I believe that um, Stephen Breyer retiring from the Supreme court in June, that will most definitely be coming up. And uh, Joe Biden um, accidentally cussing out, um, I believe it was a Fox News anchor, that most definitely will be coming up as well. We might be talking about Ukraine this weekend, not sure. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for, uh, for Alex and for the team and uh, sharing what you do so admirably here. And thank you to our audience for taking part and learning a little bit about what, uh, what the LCC fighting smelt with the boxing gloves do. And uh, please join us again next week. Thank you, everybody.